In this video, we're going to cover the topic of digital equity in 10 key areas and introduction, relevant research, self-assessment, key concepts, digital transformation, impacts on digital pedagogy, data analysis impacts, college and career readiness, measurement and application, support focus areas. So to kick off the introduction of digital equity, I want to share this article from ISTE, Five Things Every Educator Should Know About Digital Equity. This article gives a great little overview of digital equity. The first point being that there's more to digital equity than devices and bandwidth. Close the digital equity gap for pre-service teachers. Educators should make computer science a reality, specifically for girls. Let's continue to build on the equity gains in the area of digital learning since the pandemic, and let's help digital equity increase accessibility to digital learning tools and resources. Now let's talk about the area of data and relevant research in the area of digital equity. This is an article from the CTN Community Network, the CTN Community Tech Network. This is a global perspective on digital equity and bridging the digital divide. This article talks about Estonia's attempt to bridge the digital divide. The government has made tremendous strides in e-initiatives and looks to continue to grow with digital innovation. India has been tremendously progressive with mobile learning and expanding its broadband connectivity to support learning with mobile devices. Uruguay's One Laptop Per Child initiative helped kick off, kick off a huge initiative in LATAM with the presenting of a device to every student to help support their learning at home and at school. Now let's discuss some self-assessment questions and some collaborative questions. Reflect on the level of digital equity in your classroom. How does digital inequity affect your students' learning? As a group, consider answering these questions. What strategies can be implemented to support digital equity? What are some scenarios where technology improved learner outcomes? Now let's discuss some key concepts, skills, practices, and knowledge related to digital equity. I'm going to present to you the Advancing Equity for All presented by the Department of Educational Technology in the United States. What they present as ways to help have digital equity across all learners is to support public trust through partnerships, learn from those who have experienced inequity, and provide opportunities for feedback. Co-develop clear goals and strategies with communities to craft a comprehensive digital equity plan. Also, to raise public awareness and provide ongoing support for low or no cost broadband programs. And of course, to continue to provide opportunities for digital literacy training and professional learning opportunities. The Department of Educational Technology cites the availability of resources, supporting, of course, the adoption of resources, and maintaining affordability for these resources. Now let's discuss digital transformation in regards to digital equity. I want to present to you this website from the Wisconsin Department of Public Education, Educational Equity in the Digital Age. This is a great progressive website that outlines for Wisconsin their vision for digital equity. It says it's a condition in which all individuals and communities have the information technology capacity needed for full participation in our society, democracy, and economy. Digital equity is necessary for civic and cultural participation, employment, lifelong learning, and access to essential services, expanding the work of COSIN with additional research on the educational gaps that can be created by a lack of access to what students need. Digital equity provides the four pillars to ensure students can participate in a wide spectrum of digital learning activities, internet at home for designated school use, not leveraged by more than two students, access to the internet at the time they need it, digital literacy skills for students and adults, as well as digital resources, content, instructional tools to complete learning activities. I cited this in my area around digital transformation because I do believe that it's important for states and government organizations to be able to have a definition for digital equity so they can begin to see how they can vision it for their community. Now let's discuss technology trends. I'm citing some research here from Stenka Zoviara, Sales Pilko, and Kijang Jiao, and Yun Oshima, Artificial Intelligence and New Technologies and in Inclusive Education for Minority Students, a Systematic Review. This article does research into the use of artificial intelligence and the new, intel and new technologies involved with artificial intelligence into an inclusive education scenario with minority students. 
And some of the conclusions found is that AI and new technologies for inclusive education must consider the situation of the minority groups that need access to quality education. Such technologies can play an important role in supporting the inclusion of minority students identified by their ethnicity, culture, and languages. In an increasingly digitized world, it is also important to note that technology does not exist in isolation, but is immersed in society. Thus, technology and society mutually shape each other. So this definitely speaks to the power of in having a vision for digital equity, specifically with new technologies, and also as we begin to engage in a lot of uh, investigation with how AI is going to impact education and how it impacts all of these different communities that need to use it effectively and need to have equal access. Now let's talk about the impact on digital pedagogy with increased digital equity or awareness for digital equity. I am citing an article from the Learning Accelerator here, particularly around digital equity foundations. Here, in-depth conversations about digital equity rely on basic foundations of connectivity, devices, and security. With these structures in place, analyze how you may progress from ensuring digital access towards implementing digital equity. Reflect, what is needed to make hops, skips, leaps, toward improvement with digital equity. So these are questions framed for educators when considering how to bring digital equity into their classroom. What needs do your teachers and students have that could be addressed by ensuring equitable access to devices and high-speed internet, as well as the knowledge and skills to best take advantage of them? What are your students' cognitive, linguistic, social, and physical needs, and how do the technologies, resources, and experiences intend to meet them? What is your vision for learning with technology? What knowledges and skills do teachers need to implement the practices that align to your vision and meet students' needs? What knowledges and skills do students need to be able to take advantage of the available technology to support their learning? So these are all questions to support educators in better envisioning digital equity in their classroom and defining the role of equitable access of technology. Now let's talk about data analysis impacts. Here I'm citing an article from February 1st, 2022 from Candice Bocala and Catherine Parker Boudet, Taking an Equity Lens. This is an article from ASCD. It particularly speaks to how we should be looking through leadership and educational change with an equity lens, specifically speaking to preparing, inquiring, acting, and using the ACE habits of mind of share commitments to action, assessment, and adjustment intentional collaboration, and relentless, relentless focus on evidence. So this is a framework to think about when looking and using an equity lens with fr frameworks in education. Now let's talk about impact. Now let's talk about the impact on college and career readiness with digital equity. Here's an article from the 2019 Federal Reserve System by Ashley Putnam and Alvaro Sanchez, Digital Skills for the 21st Century Workforce. And what this the article discusses is how apprenticeship and work learn earn programs and new types of work credentials apprenticeship and work learn earn programs and new types of credentials and also different types of technology credentials such as CompTIA and Amazon Web Services credentials help support learners who may not have a college degree have more equitable employment opportunities in our modern workforce by empowering people to engage with technology and develop important credentials, we support learners of all levels and also empower learners to achieve more through learning. Now let's talk about measurement and application with digital equity. This is an article from Digital Beat, Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. Digital Compass, Digital Opportunities Compass, Digital Opportunities Compass, Metrics to Monitor, Evaluate, and Guide broadband and digital equity policy. So what they've done here is they've developed an assessment tool for equity policy. And just to speak to a small part of their equity tool, they've created six components and in indicator areas. The first area is contexts, indicators to add to socio-demographics, governance, connectivity, skills, application, and outcomes. They would like this tool to be used to have several potential benefits for local, county, and state policymakers. It can be used as a vehicle for interorganizational collaboration and engagement, as well as a holistic framework for broadband and digital equity planning 
implementation and evaluation, particularly for communities that may not know where to begin. They see that by defining five specific, specific measurable objectives, it can give a great starting place to begin measuring your digital equity. Now let's do our final piece, support, focus areas, and goals. Back to a resource the Learning Accelerator provides. This talks about actively engaging. Experiences that are actively engaging can address a key barrier to digital equity. The U.S. Department of Education introduced the idea of the digital use divide in the 2017 National Education Technology Plan. It noted that vast disparities exist between students who use technology in transformative ways and those who use tools to complete the same activities as they had on paper, i.e. digital worksheets. So simply providing low-income students access to technology, computers, game authoring software, graphics applications, was an indicator of achievement by emphasizing the acquisition of tech over the acquisition of high quality instruction the class was simply not built to deliver a robust stem learning experience curriculum poor classrooms severely restrict the ability of students to develop the full range of skills that adequately prepare them for post-secondary education in an economy that values the higher edu educated and higher skilled persons so what the learning accelerator goes on to provide is that when digital equity is fully realized, students have multiple pathways to engage and create in ways that are meaningful to them. Classroom practices account for the reality that students come into the classroom with varying digital and media literacy skills. Teachers cannot assume that all skills are comfortable with and knowledgeable, knowledgeable about learning with technology. Students have the ability to apply and reflect on their learning deeply and authentically in new ways and on new platforms and with new audiences. Instruction, devices, and materials should aim to build students' confidence, capabilities, to autonomously use technology both in inside, inside and outside of the classroom. This is known as digital agency. So those are some thoughts to take away with your beginning with digital equity. I'll be providing more sessions as we go along. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate your time.